All right, let's go to Lynn in Boston. Hey, Lynn, what's up? Thanks, Dr. John. Thanks for taking my call. Hi, thank you so much for calling. What's happening? Um, so I got to tell you, after that story, these pretzels are making me th really thirsty. <laughs> the pretzels are making me... <laughs> well done. Well done. Uh, uh, so, so, my situation. So, I have a 19-year-old daughter. Um, she met a really nice young man last summer. Uh, great qualities, great family values, just overall really nice young man. Um, he enlisted in the military at the end of last summer, so the relationship was short to begin with. Um, they continued their relationship. We attended his military graduation with his family. Um, he came home at Christmas time, asked her to marry him. So they're currently engaged. Okay. Um, a couple weeks ago, uh, she started hanging out with a, a gentleman from work and began cheating on her fiance. Ooh. Um, yeah. So I confronted her. We had a long talk. Um, I let her know that I didn't agree with what she was doing and I couldn't support it. Mm -hmm. Um, I told her that I understand that she's in a very difficult situation and I don't agree with her choices, but I did offer to walk alongside her if she were to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I suggested that she pause the relationship with the new person and speak with her fiance and let him know exactly what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I also suggested that potentially because it was such a sticky and hairy situation that she get a counselor to walk alongside her yeah. with, with her um, and agreed, you know, I offered to pay for it. And wow. she scheduled an appointment with a, with a counselor, um, stated that what she was doing was wrong and that she wanted to speak to her fiance about everything. Um, but I found out last week that she didn't stop cheating, didn't pause anything, hasn't spoken with her fiance. Yikes. And to make things worse, um, she's planning on going to see him with his family at the end of this week. Oh, wow. Does she live with yeah. you? She does, yes. Ooh, does she work? She does. She, is, she works full-time um, during the summer and then goes to, to college and works part-time when she's in college. Hmm, man. I am going... Ugh. So before I just start answering questions, I want to make sure I don't answer questions you're not asking. Um, okay. Because I have a visceral response across the board on this, as I know you do too. Um, mm -hmm. So how can I help? Let me start there. Well, I guess I just have this guilt that I owe him the truth or I owe his family the truth. You know, and I'm trying to get her to do the right thing and come clean with him. And, you know, um, I think she's having a hard time with it because... She wants to be with him, and I think that ultimately he would be her choice. But in order to be with him, she has to marry him now, move with him, choose the military life for the next three years. And being 19, I honestly don't know if she's ready to make that. Obviously, we, we know she's not ready to make that choice, but I just think that. Yeah, she doesn't want to be with him. She wants to be with the idea of him. Because being with him is, is, it comes with all those things you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Right. My wife yep. wants to be with me and I'm a lunatic, right? I'm a lot. <laughs> and we live out in the woods and also I work in media. And so we get stopped at every dinner we have now. I, so, but she wants to be with all of me, not an idea, a romanticized picture of what you might, part of you. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, she doesn't want to be with him. Not by a long shot. She wants to be with this idea of him. Um, and that's a huge difference. Yeah. Um, so, man, I'm going to probably end up giving you a recommendation that I don't normally recommend. Um, first and foremost, you seem to like this guy more than she does. And that's pretty common and it would be cool. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're going to have to keep that to yourself. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. You like this guy and you, it's, I can just, by, by your description of him, you, if, if we fast forwarded four or five years, you, you would love for your daughter to have ended up with this guy. Right. Totally. So, so there's that. Um, before I, before I start running my mouth here, did she learn this at home anywhere? Or is there any sort of deceptive, we kind of just keep things quiet, just put your head down. Did she pick that up anywhere? I would say communication hasn't always been key. Um, so maybe 
t- essentially, yeah. T- t- tell me a little bit more. You said that very in a very uh, fl- flowery. Communication hasn't always been key. <laughs> I mean, that's you know, I've had relationships where it's like, like I'm in a relationship where I could totally communicate better. You know, so but the cheating, like I no, mm-hmm. there's been no, never been deception as far as okay. that. Like I've been cheated on in my life. I was with someone that had a fiance and I didn't know about it. Did you, t- so did you tell she, her that? Yes. Okay. I, okay. You know, I've explained to her that I've been on the other end and it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, so, so <laughs> here's the thing. Um, when it comes to addiction, I often buck the system and if it's safe, I always want people to have a place to come home and mm-hmm. the conventional wisdom in some circles is you kick their butt out of there when they get their life back then they can move out. And I know that addiction is a connection issue, right? Um, mm-hmm. Now, if someone's not being safe or whatever, then they have to go stay somewhere else. But in this situation, it's different because they are actively hurting somebody other than themselves. And I know addiction hurts everybody. I know all that, but what I would tell her, I'm just thinking if this is my child, you mm-hmm. are not welcome to use my home base as something, as a platform for you to actively hurt somebody in the way that you are. Mm-hmm. And the important thing here is, is that she is making this choice, not you. Right. So you are not kicking her out as much as she is choosing to leave. And I think it would be really important for you to sit down and say, hey, one of the cornerstones, I've thought about this more. Number one, I haven't been great at communicating things and I'm, I'm going to start working on that getting better. Like when mm-hmm. I have to have a hard conversation, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start taking proactive steps to get better at that. And I didn't model that for you well and I'm sorry. But the more I've thought about what's happening here and remembering being on the other end of this, um, one of my core values is to always tell the truth and to never cheat or deceive somebody even when it's hard and I can't allow I I am choosing to not allow that to happen here I want you to live with me I want you to be here but if you're going to continue to actively enter into the destruction of somebody else's life long long tail destruction on this deal um, then you're choosing to go live somewhere else and I hope you'll make a different choice Mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah, totally. We've had, I mean, we've kind of been leading down that road where I've, you know, given her not really the ultimatum, but I've said like, you know, you need to tell him that you, and, or, or if you don't, then I will be forced to have that conversation either with him or his parents. And I, I don't think that's the right move for you. I think that yeah. would be such a violation of her trust over time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that that's the right move. I think that she needs okay. to bear the weight of this as she's an adult making adult decisions. Right. Yep. Um, and I really think it's important that she understands she is choosing this. Yep. Not there's she there hasn't been a line in the sand whereby mom has to uh, is is weaponizing our relationship. That's not what's happening here. Mom has a mm-hmm. set of values that I'm choosing to not live into, so I'm choosing to leave. And that sounds subtle, but that's a huge difference because then every phone call you have when she's moving is, I hope you'll stay here. I really hope you'll stay here. Um, how do you think this ends? I hope you'll choose to stay here and not choose to leave. But this is one of the values that is is you have to have to live in my house, right? And yeah, yeah. I, I would say this, this is hard, but she's welcome to break up with her fiance and I hope you'll still love her if she breaks oh, up I with this. I said, you know I don't care what you choose, you know, but that's, that's your choice. I just want you to do the right thing. Yeah, be a person of integrity. Like, make a choice. Yeah, yeah make a choice. And it doesn't even have to be either or it can be you, you can, you can make, choose you yeah. and, you know, put the time and effort into you and figuring out what you want, yeah. you know, that what's going to benefit you in the long run. But just remember 19 year olds are still, they're not listening as much as they're watching. And okay. that's where y- you're walking through a very clear, hard conversation is going to provide a model for her to have a very clear and hard conversation using okay. words like, you know, kind of we've been thinking or communication's kind of key. It's got to be very, very clear. I spent some time this last week writing down my values and I should have done this a long time ago and I didn't. Mm -hmm. One of them is we tell the truth and we are people of integrity. And right now you're not being a person of integrity. You're, You're willingly, intentionally trying to hurt somebody. 
And yeah, and I think that's what bothers me the most. It, it is, and, and it should, right? It, it, it should. Yeah, and totally. this would be if this dude wasn't as, gr- he's a great guy, and that makes this example easier. Even if he was an idiot, he's a scumbag. You still don't, you still don't do yeah. that. You know what I mean? Absolutely You, not. you still mm-hmm. put that out there. So um, I would spend some time with my values, and I would spend some time being honest with her about, I haven't been good at communication, and that's going to change. And so here's where we are. Um, here's our values. And maybe she'll join you. She probably won't, but maybe she'll join you in a values exercise and say, who are we going to be? Who are we, who, here's who I'm going to be. I want to know who you are planning on being. Because right now, every minute, every hour, every day, the actions you take or don't take is contributing to the person you're going to become. And let's be intentional about that. Let's just don't wake up somewhere on an island and be like, how did we get here? No, let's be intentional about who we're going to become. And one of those core, core values and virtues is I'm going to be a person of integrity. And um, then you have to have the hard conversation about here's a boundary of mine. And I hope, hope, hope you'll choose. I'll hold your hand while you make the call. Um, I'll fly with you out there if you want to do it in person, whatever that looks like. Um, but yeah, and for God almighty, don't go on a trip with his parents. That's just, oh, geez, that's just gross, man. That's gross. Hey, thank you for loving her. And sometimes love comes with hard moments of boundaries and accountability, and it's hard. It's hard. Um, She's lucky to have you. 